Hello, and welcome. I'm Zandir, and uh, here we are back again. Uh, as you can see, I've done some work building this. Let me just go over this real quick. Here is the solar panels, and I've built this in a way where uh, they're never obstructed, and I have enough room to build in really either direction, but mostly that one, without uh, any obstructions to my solar panels. I like it even go this way if I really wanted to try to, but uh, I've put in this tube here. So, as you can see, I have it up, but if I send it to down and click, you can see it goes down, no problem, until it reaches there. That's a problem we'll solve later. And if I press up, watch this pipe carefully, see, it breaks it and sends it back into the deployer where it sits comfortably. So, that should be enough to get us down to the surface. Uh, Bedrock is at about five, I think. I don't know if it's different in a flatland world. Um, I'll figure that out eventually, I guess. So this is going to be our left and right movement platform. What'll happen is the there's a blank space in there. This is just to prevent the wire from connecting when this is there. Uh, there's a there's a frame section under there. When that moves, it will push the whole frame except for that, which will then move here. And the rest of the frame will go wah. So there'll now be an empty space under it. Uh, that's not really necessary, but I do it anyhow, just just because. But it'll be in front of this frame motor, which, as you can see, is arrowed to point it this way. So basically, in order to move a frame, you have to send two pulses. One to move the frame, and one to move that frame motor back. So that way you can proceed to keep moving. Um, everything will move. I've already tested this will work uh, so you know this one goes this will move it to the right because I'm orienting based on that so this will move it right this one will move it left then I've got uh, this one which will move it backwards is that right? no this one moves it backwards this one moves it forwards so blue forwards cyan backwards cyan? cyan backwards uh, yellow will move it to the right and orange will move it to the left. Uh, and I've tested all these. I know they work. So let's just go stand over here with the way I've oriented it. Let's say I wish to move it back. So that would be towards us. Press 1. What the? Whoa. Um. What? Uh. I've already moved it once. Now you can see that frame motor is now in front of that other one. When I press it, that moves. Now, if I want to move it forwards, same deal. That one will run, but it won't be able to push it in time. So, there's no real issue with that. Uh, everything else maintains power, so this should be easy to get moving. I need to figure out I must have accidentally cut out the frame that's supposed to be there earlier, but we need to go back to the overworld to make some things first. So no real issue there. First thing we're going to need is a timer, and I'm just going to make sure to bring a support frame with me. Uh, yeah, I didn't exactly show you how to make that. It's stone wire, which is just stone wafers like that. Uh, there's a stone pointer, which is made from those things there. A stone torch, stone, and stone wafer. And just a couple of stone wafers there. The cathode is just a torch on top of a wafer. And then there's the anodes, which is three wafers and four redstone, but you get three anodes when you do it. Now, the thing is, is this is all well and good. We have all the wireless frequencies and stuff set up. They move and whatnot. But what good does that do you? You need a way to move it. So, the good starting point of any computer is some ribbon cable. Now, that ribbon cable will be placed into select spots that I've left open on these. For, in this case, the I.O. expander. This will allow us to communicate through the bundled cable. The bundled cable contains all the colors, and you can actually control each color separately within one cable which basically means you have 16 cables of different colors running along one wire that operate uh, separately from each other. 
So that's all well and good. I still have this on the red power tab. It was made it easier for me to find the things. And also, I'm recording this shortly after the previous episode, so I could get this done. Now, this is the disk drive. Motor, wafer, get a disk drive. Now, I just realized that I've forgotten something. But uh, here's the Lime Lumar. You need this in order to make the monitor, which also requires ribbon cable. There's a good reason for all of this, and we'll get there shortly. And, of course, the central processing unit, because you need something to do all the processing. Now, you can see this is a bit of a costly thing, but I'm not too concerned about it. So, and I find the, the red power computers to be far more reliable in terms of long-term operations in comparison to the computer craft ones, because... The red power ones are stored basically server side. All the operations are done server side, and the Minecraft client, as it works, is basically a server, but it's ran internally. So, what that means is that if I were to run a Quarry script and quit the game, when I come back, it should still be running. Now, what I'm going to do is I didn't exactly add a chunk loader here, but that's that's fine. Don't worry about that. Actually, I will worry about that. That is a very big problem. I need to make a chunk loader. So I need two diamonds, four obsidian. I need a book. I need five gold. One, two, three, four, five. And an ender pearl. Slight oversight here. And I missed a step already. Fail. Now, there's of course only one thing you can make from these things, and everybody knows how to make that. And I've showed you how to make the chunk loader, but uh, yeah, I put one on the uh, the frame quarry. And this guy, these are actually uh, glass slabs made with the thing, so I can just break them. Um, I'll move this guy later. Screw it. Now these lasers will allow me to see how much area the chunk loader is covering. Which, oddly enough... Oh. Hey. Why can't... Whoa. What the hell's going on? But uh, if I'm right, when I want to be loading, I'm going to be loading 81 chunks, just to be safe. Uh, if I go outside, can I... Oh, I saw the lasers for a second. They should be, in theory, outside the base on all sides. I haven't seen one actually come past me. Which is a problem. I don't like how I can't see the chunk loader lines, but um, that should be just enough to always keep everything within my base loaded. So I'm gonna hide those lasers, and I could theoretically set it to set it to round, and it should uh, hold less chunks but be closer tied to my mountain. But I think this is good enough for now. So I'm going to take this glass slab and put you back right there. So now we want to go back over here. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Now, as I established previously, I want to reattach this, otherwise this could be a serious problem. I'm not quite sure how that happened. I'm assuming I made a slight mistake somewhere whenever constructing this. And don't get me wrong, this is not the most optimal way to construct this. However, it was the best way I could think of that looked quite clean to work with. Um, you know, the modules are separated in a way where I can easily remedy any future issues. But, uh, down... Oh, Wrong side. You know what? Come down. This 
will give us just enough space to get up on here. Oh, I guess we could get him on this side. This is the jacketed wire that I showed you last time. It's just, uh, I don't have it on me. Jack. Get dead. So it's just the cobblestone covers around an alloy ingot. There's two of them here, and I have one of those little uh, redstone wire bits. Uh, alloy. 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 Okay. Alloy wire. There's one of those right there, which is why it looks like it's connecting to the surface, because it technically is. So I'm going to want to set this to, I think, 0.75 should be frequent enough. I think. And what that'll do is that'll trigger these. Because if I send this down one more, which this seems like a terrible idea, but let's do it. You see how every single one of those activated? When I bring this back up, you'll see those blocks are gone. That is what's triggering it. So, yeah. As you can see, that dug those up, went in the ender chest, and as long as my chunk loader and all the other stuff is set up properly... Uh, yeah, see? It's empty. So, but, that's all well and good, but manually controlling it's not enough. So, we know it works. All the wireless frequencies are good. I showed those. So, what's the next step? The next step is to set up the control unit for it. We don't need these. Which means that I need a CPU. And we'll build this over here. Now, on that CPU, you also need a monitor. It doesn't need to be on it, it just needs to be touching it, or you can connect it via ribbon cable, which I'll show you shortly. And, let's see, I'll just do... It does need to be attached to the CPU, but I'll do this just for the sake of showing that I can do this. There. Now, I have this bundled cable. I need one of each color. Which, as you can see, I have more than one of each color left. Oop. And... bam. Now, the only important thing will be setting up these... Hey! Hey! I don't like the way you're looking at him. Let's just move it one more bundled cabled out. Bundled cabled? Oh no. I knocked out part of the floor. That is one of the real downsides of building out of a floor thing that you have to do stuff to every time. Now, in order to keep this fairly logical, I'm going to try to keep bits of the same general color near each other as much as I can. So. We had established that blue is forward, I think. Oh, great. Uh, yes. Blue is forward. I don't have it up where I can see it anymore. So, I'm improvising. More or less. Orange will move it left. Yellow will move it right. Green, I know, is down. And this is up. Okay, so 51, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. Good. But this is just an IO extender. He's there for a reason. However... Oh, uh-oh. What I do. Okay, sorry about that. My game crashed. I think it's because uh, I accidentally right clicked with the linking book, so it tried to activate like two UIs at once. Now, these are the default numbers. Uh, the monitor, which is the console, defaults to ID 1. Uh, the disk defaults to ID 2. And the IO expander defaults to somewhere, and it should be working on its own. I believe so. But, there's a slight problem. 
Why do I always spell that wrong? No. What? I have no idea what I just did wrong. No work. Okay. Now, in here somewhere, not the blank flop. Actually, I think it is the blank floppy. Combined with a redstone, I think was the recipe. But I need five wood and an iron. Iron. Also, the uh, the game crash did provide me one bonus advantage. I was able to get that text document back where I could see it. Okay, now, in theory, if I take this blank floppy, and apparently throw my redstone on the ground, and combine that, I get a fourth boot disk. Now, it's kind of hard to program a computer without an operating system, as I'm sure you can imagine. Which, if you click here, it's just flashing, there's nothing actually going on. Now, I kind of forget some of the things for this, which could be a slight problem. But uh, whenever you start it up, it boots from the disk. These are all the base words, because it's a stack-based system. So, if I want to, say, tell it to dig... I can compile a program like so. This will make a new word with a case-sensitive name of dig. Now you see it's compile. Now as a stack-based system, you can't really go back in the line to my knowledge. It just reads it down the line, basically. So the first thing I want to do is you look and where is it? Oh, there it is. You see, IOX set, I'm not entirely sure if this is going to be done right, but I believe it's IOX set, no, I'm already doing it wrong, already doing it wrong. It's kind of like working with the Miscraft worlds, the modifier goes first. So, the ID for the lime wire, which is for going down, is IOX set that, that should work I think I don't know if I need an exclamation mark on the end I don't think so because if you look at IOX it does now I'll want to wait a ticks what ticks does is it specifies how long to wait based on world ticks now the number of ticks there are is 20 per second. So if I want to leave this on for a quarter of a second, that's some strange and random number. No, no, no it's not. Really, every tick is two seconds? Not two seconds, a twentieth of a second. Point two seconds. No. Point oh two? See, I'm retarded. All I know is that if I leave it on for four ticks, it should be long enough, roughly. Now, by typing zero IOX set, what it should do is then turn that back off. Then, I will do another ticks. That is not ticks. Ticks. Only this time, I want to wait a full second before I do it. So I'm going to do 20. Now, that's essentially what it takes to dig, right? So if I were to do that, what this would mean is, in theory, if I were to type, uh, let's just do it 5 for now. So 5 times, which will repeat this program so that many times, it will now dig by placing dig on the end of it. So it will now do dig five times. One. Um, there may be an error in the program. Uh. What? Oh. <sighs> What did I do wrong? I don't see anything wrong. 
Well, crap. I think I may have made a slight issue. Uh, halt. Hey, hey, you shouldn't be on. And start. Why are you running? Stop it. Stop it. See, I don't know what happened here. And theoretically, I think it was shift right clicking you're supposed to be able to change the ID but for some odd reason that doesn't work for me and it never has but uh what's going on here IOX set oh zero IOX set oh bollocks well what about IOX reset Empty, empty stack. 32 IOX reset. Okay, it's off. I guess, let's try this a different way then, I guess. So, let's remake this program. It's now deleted because I didn't save the program at all. So, ideally I'd want to make another blank floppy to save my program on afterwards. So, but luckily it keeps the stuff from the previous setup on there so I can see what I did and I can easily duplicate it only this time I'll do 32 IOX reset which should in theory turn that off and then I'll do the 20 ticks that's the only reason I'm putting that ticks on the end is so whenever I do the times thing it has that buffer time on the end of it so and I'm gonna make I sh I'm actually gonna test this before I make anything five times actually I better do it four times now because I want to be where I was times dig one two three Four. Right now, items should come flowing through here. Oh, they already did. See how they're uh, in here? Now, that was a problem I was afraid of. What's going to happen is uh, things are going to go basically equidistant. What? Oh, things were still in the uh, the pipes, and they took time to come through. Eh. Okay, but you can see that it's actually digging. Now, we need another program, which I'm going to call Retract. This is going to work on the same exact principle, only this time it's going to be the green one, which has an ID color. The, the, the number for that is... 8192. Yeah. It would help if I could type, though, apparently. Jeez. So, 8192 set. Four ticks. 8192 IOX reset. 20 ticks. End compile. Now, say I wanted to do a... Now, I want to make a new program, right? Now, I'm going to call this one Dig70. Yeah, like that. So now what I'm going to do is instead of doing all those things, I can now type 70 times Dig followed by 70 times Re tracked. Now, this should all work well and good because of the fact that I made those programs like I did. So, by doing that, 
it should now be able to dig down if I type dig 70. Now I don't need a times on it because it's already doing stuff. Now my only concern is that I don't overload the ender chest, which is why I have three of these dudes on here. I have three of them to prevent such a thing from happening. You can hear cobble getting burnt, but you can also see cobble making it through. Uh, basically any stacks of cobble it pulls out that are less than four. What is with that color glitch? I don't have Optifine in at the moment. But uh, things seem to be going where they're supposed to be going, but that is a really weird color glitch. Now, this will keep going at what it's doing. And these are pulling it out of here. It's literally going down. I'm pulling up uh, 25 blocks per second. So it takes roughly, it should take roughly one minute for me to hit bedrock. One minute ish. And these things are going to end up in all weird positions and stuff, but uh, I'm going to end up with some duplicates that I'm going to have to sort out later. But, uh, let's see what I can do about that. Uh, what? Are those different? Oh, that's lead. Now, the reason why that's bouncing back instead of just going into this chest is because it knows they're somewhere closer. And I ended up with multiple leads, I ended up with multiple tins. I think this is tin. Actually, I think. That's tin, that's silver. That's tin. So basically, it's not the most optimal system, necessarily. And I'm going to be honest, I have... Whoops. One too many layers on here. Because I shouldn't need more than just those two layers at the moment. And the cool thing about using the relay... So I can right click on it and basically send this stuff back through to resort itself. It'll go wherever it feels it can fit and completely screw up all my organization until I run it a few times. Which is part of the reason why I don't have any organization. But uh, you can see it's still running, but when you go over here and look, it not doing anything? Oh, it finished. Now, if we go back to the mining world. Hey. Should be able to take a look. I don't know why those are there, but they can stay there. Look at this. Oh, wow. Check that out. It's because it's a flat world, it also means that bedrock is at uh, one or technically zero. So that gives us a little bit more mining potential and there shouldn't be any lava lakes or anything else stupid down there that we don't want. So this sh should be able to get us everything we want. We're going to have a bunch of stone and stuff that we don't really want, but it can go from surface to bedrock in I have it set to basically 70 seconds but it takes another 70 to come back up so I can basically do a 5x5 five five hole in about two and a half minutes but that's all well and good but we need to be able to move it so we'll make a new program I'll call it uh, move right I know. Highly, you know, advanced name, right? So, as right, I have yellow, which is a color of 16. You know, at this point, I'm pretty sure you understand how this is going to work. Except, there's one thing. The way the moving works, it has to be done with slightly different timings. Now, it can be active for four ticks. You know, that's long enough for it to understand, okay, I need to move. 
and then you'll set it to you know oops 16 iox reset but I've had best success with getting this to actually not go kaput on me with about a 50 tick or two and a half seconds bef between well I guess suppose th on this movement it should be okay uh, so we'll wait four ticks for it to understand that it turned off 16 iox set four ticks oops made a mistake ticks iox reset oh bollocks and see the only problem with this is now that I've screwed that up I don't think I can kill it and because I didn't save after I made the previous words actually uh, forget or well erase move right unknown token erase is it forget maybe move right okay so now if we do words you can see my dig 70 retract and dig are all there but move right that I just made does not exist which move right which I just failed horribly at making I should say that is the easiest way to get rid of it now let's see if I can't do this right this time I I set four ticks 16 iox reset four ticks actually I'm gonna make this one slightly longer ticks 16 iox set four ticks iox re Yo, oh, I almost I almost fucked the program up again iox reset and then y you need a half decent amount of time before you move it again to make sure that the uh, the power gets kicked into that frame motor that you shifted back around because it loses its power after the initial movement and you need to make sure there's enough time for it to gain it back while this will slow down the overall movement of the system uh, basically what this will do is this should give us the ability to move it right five times with no issue so if I do five times move right one yeah I don't know if that's a long enough delay I think that's actually gonna bug it out I'm gonna have to retype that program a third time let's go see if it worked. No. In fact, why is there green wire here? That's not a good sign. Because that would mean that I've had some wire. Ooh. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Wait, what? Oh. Crap. On a cracker. Ah. <sighs> That's not good. Where's the the rest of the pieces? Are they down here? Well, that's not good. I can tell you what I probably did wrong. I can also tell you that I have no idea where the pieces went. Oh, wait. Okay. Th this should be recoverable. 
how not to set it up. First of all, there is nothing holding that at all. This wire, there's nothing holding it. Which is a problem. A very large one. Secondly, I'm assuming what happened here... Oh, that actually set up right. Is that there was nothing holding that for some reason? Even though there should have been? Oh. God damn it. We want you for down. Lime is down. Uh, crap. I feel like I'm missing another lime wire. Actually, I feel like I'm missing a lot of things, to be honest. And this is one of the problems that can occur. Well, at least it's in the right position. Are all the wires attached up here? They appear to be. Now, here's the real question. One that I never made a thought of. Is every single piece of frame on this entire construct bound together somehow? And the answer to that question, I believe, is no. Why is it no? Because you'll notice that that whole set of frame there is not actually connected to anything. At all. So, that is a problem that needs to be remedied. Now... The only thing wrong with this situation is that I'm missing a wire from here. And I don't know where that lime wire ran off to. Well, crap. Okay. Problems that can occur when things are not fully and completely tested before trying to build their computer programs. That is probably not enough frame. I'm not gonna lie. Let's just bring all of it. God dang it. Stop that. Now. Those guys... Actually, this one is not held by anything. And... This one is not held by anything. Um... There's also a fairly similar problem with the one that goes right around... Okay, we need to move this whole thing down. Now, I should be able to move this down at the moment, no problem. No, no, no problem? Hello? Uh... Ah, crap. And that is another problem that somehow worked its way in here, even though I could have swore I solved that already. Down. 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 Now, the reason why I'm doing that is I'm going to place a frame... First of all, go away. Frame here, and wallet. Now, I should be able to just do that. 
that should be able to move it back up. One, two, three, four. And press the button, and all should be well and good. Now, let me make sure all these wires have something to be held by. This guy does not. Hey, hey. Now, I'm not sure if... Oh, that guy's not held by... Well, he's held by up top. I thought... What are you held by? You're held by him. You're held by that. And... All of this should be held by stuff. Oh, oh, oh. When in doubt... Frames. What, you're having issues with things for some reason not staying? Just add some more frames. Why not? Make sure that everything is fully and completely connected. Adding a few frames to make sure that everything moves when it's supposed to won't really hurt how much power it costs for it to move as long as you don't add like a hundred of them. So, ideally, that should work now, right? So I want to move it right. What? Uh <sighs> See, now here comes another problem. If there's something that for some odd reason it can't move, it'll get very, very angry. And I'm not sure what exactly is its problem this time. So you see, it's not that it can't move the head because it's not actually attached to anything. It's just not doing. Okay, how about left? Left is also not doing. Why is left not doing? Ah, <sighs> crap. See, that's held, that's held. Those should be held. Held, held. Where do I keep on getting the cobblestone covers from? I'm so confused right now. See, this is what things end up becoming for me. Is For some odd reason, I'll periodically have really weird issues that for some odd reason don't wish to fix themselves. And don't make a whole lot of sense. Oops. See, I'm wondering if maybe it's actually not liking that. No, that's still fine. Not fine, but uh, you know what I mean. That is not working as intended. Where is that going? Oh no. I just realized that means that something is completely out of skew across everywhere. Everywhere. Uh Crap. See, I'm not.
I'm not entirely sure why it's not functioning. Because if I can move it, if I can still move it down, see, I can move it down, and I should still be able to move it there. See, what exactly is not being held in this situation? Because, like, I can see, I can understand that cable's not being held. But the frame motors should be all fine and dandy with each other and all that noise. If I move this guy, it doesn't care. Well, how about if I put one in there? It doesn't care. What the fuck? That frame motor is being held by that frame. The frame above that is holding the other one. This battery is being held by this frame. That one's being held by a lot of frames. These wires are all held that stuff is being held this frame is technically useless <sighs> the problems with trying to troubleshoot a bunch of nonsense is it just whoa 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 See, I don't understand why it doesn't want to move. Did this get broken? No. Sometimes I like to just test if things from other mods are preventing it from working as intended. Wasn't that? I seem to have gained. Oh, right. That's why I lost a wire. Because that moved. Wait, what? What? Okay, I understand that's there for a reason. What the hell? Well, you've seen the general idea on how I'm programming it. Um, although, I end up in this situation where I need to try and figure out what is stomping the system and just to prove that it's definitely something on the bottom and right so whatever it is it's definitely in this lower half which there's been time and time again I have stripped stuff apart here and put it back together d times and times again on other ones so, this might take a while. Yeah. <sighs> hmm. I guess I'll work on this, and then I will see you guys next time. So, I'm going to call this good. Uh... This should be fully programmed and working, and I'll probably overview that real quick next time. Uh, show you the giant holes I've made with it, and then, uh, yeah. So, like I said, I'm going to call this good, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good day.